Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that cooking video. I'm going to try to put one on there for you every day. Maybe you'll like some of these recipes and we'll, and we'll try some of them. This is our last week in this module about cooking. So we've looked at some interesting things, eco-friendly foods and eating bugs. And this week we're going to look at another story called Now You're Cooking. It's one story this week to finish up the module. So as we begin this week, let's take a look at our vocabulary and we'll uh, get these words down so that we know how to use them, excuse me, and how to read them when we get into the story. So there's seven of them today. The first one is react. Got a prefix re on it, doesn't it? React. When you react to something, you act in a way that shows you are aware of it. We watched her react with surprise when her name was announced as a finalist in the competition. So what are some things you might react to? If a bee stung you, you would react, wouldn't you? You would be aware of it if a bee stung you. That happened to me the other day when I was mowing. A bee stung me. I jumped. It, it hurt a lot. <laughs> the bee stings you'll react to. Astounded. If you are astounded by something, you're completely surprised by it. I was astounded that the contestants made such elaborate dishes in less than half an hour. Something that totally surprises you. You're astounded. What is something you might be astounded by? If you won the lottery, right? Won a million dollars? That would astound you. would be surprised by it, wouldn't it? That would be pretty awesome. What's this word? Can you sound this out for me? Luscious. <laughs> it's actually an odd middle sound with this S-C-I-O-U-S. It's like L-U-S-H. Luscious. Luscious. A food that is luscious is tasty and often juicy. There's nothing better than a luscious, juicy apple picked from a tree and eaten right in the orchard. Luscious. My dad has an apple tree in his yard. I don't know what kind of apples they are, but they get these, these kind of light colored. They're almost white apples. They're kind of odd looking, but they are so juicy and good. I love eating them all right off the tree. They are luscious. Culinary. Culinary. Something that is culinary is connected to cooking. My brother, who dreams of owning his own restaurant someday, will attend culinary school after receiving his high school diploma. My wife's brother did that. He loves to cook, and so he went to culinary school and became a cook. And he's a good cook, too. If you like to cook, that might be the type of school you'd like to go to when you finish high school. All right, our next words, if I can get to them. Oh, my. They're not going to move for me. Here we go. All right, three more here. We've got this next one, offense. An offense is something that makes you feel hurt, annoyed, or insulted. You might say, I'm offended. <laughs> That's an, somebody had an offense against you. Please do not take offense, but I think I'm going to win the contest today. Have you ever played baseball or played some sport and told the other team, don't take offense, but I'm going to beat you. Yeah, if offense is something that makes you feel hurt. We try not to offend anybody, don't we? But sometimes people are just too sensitive and they get offended. But we'll try not to be an offense. Look at word number six. This is a word that I have never used in my life. Have you Have you ever felt said, I just feel crestfallen? I've never said that in my life. But it's in our story this week, crestfallen. If you are crestfallen, you are sad and discouraged. The cooking contestant looked crestfallen when she opened the oven to discover that her cake had collapsed. Now, crestfallen is a compound word made of two words, crest and fallen. What's a crest? Crest is like the top of something. And then fallen, you fell, like you fell off the top of something. You were feeling good, and then you fell down. You feel bad now. You're crestfallen. You're sad, and you're discouraged. And our last word here is opted. Opted. If you opted for something, you chose it. To create a healthier recipe, the chef opted to roast the vegetables instead of frying them. You opted to be a virtual student this year, didn't you? And you didn't come to school. You stayed at home and learned on your computer. You opted to do that, or your parents opted for you to do that. You chose it this year. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you're in my class. So those are our seven vocabulary words we'll be working with this week. React, astounded, luscious culinary, offense, crestfallen, and opted. And they go with the story this week called Now You're Cooking. 
Now you're cooking. This is a realistic fiction. It tells a story about characters and events that are like those in real life. Realistic fiction includes characters who act, think, and speak like real people. Realistic fiction in includes dialogue to develop a story. That means people talking to one another. Dialogue is people talking to one another. Authors of realistic fiction may tell the story through a third person point of view. We're going to talk about point of view this week. In the third person point of view, the story is told through an outside observer. We'll get more into that later, but third person is like me telling about what somebody else did. First person is me telling about what I did. Third person is telling about other people like you were watching them and you're telling their story. Okay, so let's read. Now you're cooking. Now this is in your reading book, beginning on page 184. So please get your reading book and open it with me so you can read along. It's page 184. Your vocabulary words are in the book too, so you can follow along. You know you're going to have a vocabulary assignment. It'll be tomorrow, actually, um, but you can use those the book to help you match those words tomorrow. Now you're cooking. Now you're cooking by Rene Saldana Jr., illustrated by Jonathan Allard Allardius, something like that. What do we see here on the title page? We've got onions and cucumbers and orange and broccoli. We've got this girl looking like she's ready to cook something really good. Martina Dionda couldn't have been more nervous. A few moments ago, she had heard her name announced on the school intercom. She was one of two finalists in the spring cook-off, an annual event sponsored by the school district and the local farmer's market. She couldn't believe that she'd made it this far. Before she'd entered the contest, her experience in the kitchen had been limited to pouring milk or cereal for breakfast. Otherwise, her cooking skills were non-existent. She was an avid viewer of television cooking shows, though. Her best friend, Av Avani, came up to her smiling, hugged her, and said, Now you're cooking! Avani chuckled at her own pun. When Martina didn't react, Avani said, Get it? You're in a cooking competition and you're moving to the final cook-off, so now you're cooking, right? What's wrong with her? This must be Ivani. She looks happy for her friend, but her friend doesn't look so happy, does she? I wonder what's going on here. I wonder why she almost looks mad. I don't know what's wrong with Deonda. I guess we'll find out. It wasn't that she didn't get it. Me, uh, Martina was just astounded that she made it to the finals. Okay, I'm going to go back because I thought her name was Deonda. Who's Deonda? Or Martina Deonda. Deonda's her last name. There we go. Martina was just astounded that she'd made it to the finals. She was competing with her classmate, Joey Cardenas, whose mother owned the best Mexican restaurant in town, La Tampequena. On weekends, Joey helped in the restaurant bussing tables, sweeping the floors, and learning to cook from the chef on Saturdays between lunch and dinner service. He was sure to win. Martina wished she could share in Ivani's excitement. More like my goose is cooked, she told her friend. You won't win with that kind of attitude, said Ivani. You should be more positive. Why? I mean, Joey knows how to cook. Me? I only have my cooking shows for inspiration. Avani put her hands on Martina's shoulders. You're just looking at this all wrong. You don't know as much about cooking as Joey does, but look how far you've gotten today. Those were There were 10 contestants. First, you baked some luscious breakfast empanadas. Then you made that roasted vegetable panini that the judges described as mouth-watering. Now the competition is down to the two best cooks, you and Joey. That should tell you something. I guess you're right. I'm just nervous, Avani, Avani smiled. I think most people are nervous when they compete. It means what you're doing is really important to you. It really is, Martina said. Thanks, Avani. Moments later, a voice on the intercom asked for everyone but the two contestants to leave the stage. Contestants, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's time for you to show off your culinary skills, announced MC and local television news anchor Jack Jackson. 
Joey Cardenas' mom whispered some last-second advice in his ear and left the stage. Joey looked confident as he walked up to the girls. You ready, Freddy? He asked. Hey, Joey, said Ivani. Martina is more than ready. As she turned to go, Ivani looked over her shoulder and said, She's so on fire today that the thermometer's going to explode. <laughs> Joey chuckled for a moment. There's Avani and, or there's uh, Martina and Avani. I mean, whatever this guy's name is, Joey. Joey chuckled for a moment, but then his expression became serious. You ready for this? He asked Martina. As much as I'll ever be, you? Well, you know, cooking's in my jeans, he said. No offense. None taken, she responded. But don't be surprised if I cook circles around you. If you say so, may the best cook win. With that, the two cooks took their places. Mr. Jackson joined them at the table where two paper bags from the farmer's market awaited them. The audience became quiet. Mr. Jackson looked out over the crowd and said, We've come to my favorite part of this competition, the finale. In addition to being the MC, Mr. Jackson had served as one of the judges for the very first spring cook-off ever. Miss Cardenas, Joey's mom, had won that one. What do you think is going to be in the bags? I guess it's their ingredients they have to cook with, right, from the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. There's their bags. She looks a little bit happier now, doesn't she? Martina looks a little more confident. Joey looks pretty serious. Martina looked over at Joey, who for the first time since the start of the competition looked nervous. He kept fidgeting with the strings on his apron. Martina imagined that the Cardenas family reputation was on the line. Martina looked out at the audience and saw her own parents, both beaming with pride. Avani was sitting next to them, pumping a fist in the air and mouthing the words, Go, Martina! <laughs> Mr. Jackson asked the contestants to empty their bags. Carefully, though, you don't want to crack those eggs. Your challenge is this, using part or all of every ingredient in the bag, plus a dash of this or a pinch of that, make a delicious, healthful meal. In each bag, there were three eggs, a red and a yellow bell pepper, a tomato, strawberries, and a peach. A rack of spices, seasonings, and other ingredients, ingredients stood next to the table. Martina looked over at Joey, who is now smiling, rubbing his hands together. She could almost see the gears turning in his brain. He knew what he was making. She had no clue. Uh-oh. What would you make with those ingredients? Three eggs, a couple of peppers, a tomato, strawberries, and a peach. Hmm, I'm thinking I would make some scrambled eggs and dice up those bell peppers and maybe put some cheese and diced up the tomato and make like a little pepper and tomato and cheese omelet, then have a little strawberry and peach fruit salad on the side. That's what I would do. Let's see what they do. You'll have 20 minutes, said Mr. Jackson. Cooks, are you ready? The two nodded. Joey was anxious to get to work. Martina was still thinking, but wasn't coming up with anything. Oh no, she thought. Joey's going to win this competition. Cook, cried Mr. Jackson and started the timer. Martina ran over to the rack, of, to, see, uh, the rack to see if looking at all the spices and other ingredients would inspire her. She saw a basket of bread. Sitting on top were two bilo, um, bolizos, a kind of bread that reminded her of early morning visiting her grandparents in Mexico, warm, toasty mornings. Then it struck her. She had more than just the cooking shows to inspire her. She also had memories of her abuelito, Servando, teaching her to fix his favorite breakfast. Martina took the two pieces of bread, a sprig of cilantro, I love cilantro, and some butter, and then got cooking. In the end, Martina didn't win the cook-off, but she wasn't crestfallen. She noticed that the judges had finished all of her dish, while Joey's was left half-eaten. Mr. Jackson reminded her that the instructions called for a healthful meal, and though she had used the peppers, tomatoes, strawberry, and peach, she still couldn't have separate. She could have separated the egg whites from the yolks and opted for olive oil instead of butter. But I'll tell you what, Miss Deanda, he said. That was one delicious meal. 
Martina walked up to Joey, who held his tro the trophy over his head. Congratulations, Joey, she said. You cooked a better meal than mine. It looks that way, he said, but he glanced at the judge's plates. There's always next year, though. Yes, she thought. There's always next year. And there would be many more visits to her grandparents' home between now and then. She couldn't wait for her next visit. Maybe she'd give them a telephone call that night and tell them about the competition. When I saw that, I thought she had won, didn't you? What did you think about that story? I liked it. Oh, look, we've got some we've got some bolillo boats like she made. The recipe. Let's read what's in here. This is what she made for her competition. Two bolillos or other soft white rolls. One tablespoon of butter melted. Two eggs. One tablespoon of butter or olive oil for the cooking the eggs. One fourth cup of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. Two slices of tomato. Two slices of red, yellow, or orange bell pepper. A few sprigs of cilantro. Have an adult helps you when you using the stove and oven. Preheat the oven to 350. Gently pinch out the middle of the bolillos. They should look like a little bread boat. Brush the melted butter on the in, onto each bolillo on the inside and out. Place bolillos on a baking sheet and bake for five minutes. Once lightly toasted, remove them from the oven. While the bread is baking, fry the two eggs and slice of pep and slices of pepper in butter or olive oil. Try crack cracking the egg inside the slice of pepper. Spoon a fried egg and a slice of pepper into each of the bread boats and top with a slice of tomato. Sprinkle cheese evenly onto the bread boats and bake for another five to ten minutes or until the cheese has melted. Ask an adult to remove the baking sheet from the hot oven and garnish with a sprig of cilantro. Serve with sliced peaches and strawberries on the side. And that's what she made for her contest. Cool. Well, I enjoyed that story. I hope you did, too. We're going to read it a couple more times this week. Here comes the sun shining on my face. And we'll we'll find out uh, some more about this. And hopefully you'll like some of the recipes. Either you like hers, Martina's, or you'll like some of the recipes I'm going to post with your um, slides each week. Maybe you'll want to try some. If you do, be sure and tell us about it in our meet, okay? Let's take a look at our decoding skills or phonics skills for today and this week. So we're looking at words. We've been looking at words with the vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel pattern. But these words actually have the vowel, consonant, 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 vowel pattern. That means in the middle of the two vowels, there's three consonants. Vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel words. Oops, I said that wrong. Vowel, consonant, 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 vowel words have three consonants in the middle. Two of the three consonants work together as a single, as a consonant blend. That means they make a sound together. So look at this word, athlete. So we've got vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. And the TH make a blend, don't they? It doesn't, we don't say at, huh, leet. The TH says th, th, eth, leet. Extra, extra. So we've got vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. So the TR makes a tr, tr. So we've got X and then tr. Otherwise it would sound like X, t, r. <laughs> Conflict, C, I mean vowel. Consonant, 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 vowel. Okay, the FL makes the fl, fl, conflict. Otherwise, it would sound like conflict. Mumble, vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. The BL says bull, bull. Distract, vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. TR makes the tr sound. Improve, Vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. PR makes the pr sound. Exchange. E, e, vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. The CH we know makes the ch sound. So when you've got these three consonants together between two vowels, two of them, what I'm showing you, makes a, a sound together. So they make a blend is what it's called. The CH makes the ch blend. Purchase has that blend, ch. Contract has the tr. Instead has the st, st. Cockpit has the k sound. The C and the K work together. Complaint, the P and the L work together to make the pl sound. Same thing in complex, PL. 
Okay, thimble has that blood. Is that right? Vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, blah. Thimble, bull. They make the bull sound, okay. Transform. Okay, vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. I don't know the I don't know what two are working together in this one. Trans, trans. Oh, it's not. I'm not sure about that one. I'll be honest with you. Which two are working together? Congress. Got the GR making the blend. Distrust, the TR making the bend, blend. English, GL making the blend, gl. Laundry, DR making the blend, dr. Okay, although the TH making the blend, v. Subtract, is the TR making the blend, tr. Merchant, CH making the blend, ch. Embrace, BR making the blend, br. Explode, PL making the blend, pl. Pilgrim, GR making the blend, gr. All right. Can we find vowel, consonant, 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 vowel words in this, this sentence? Went to the ocean and swam with the dolphins. Dolphins. Vowel, consonant, 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 vowel. BH says f. The F sound. All right. Your spelling words this week have that pattern in them. The vowel, consonant, 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 vowel pattern. Your words are hundred, supply, single, middle, explain, surprise, pilgrim, sandwich, instead, complete, monster, settle, address, farther, sample, although, turtle, Athlete, orchard, kingdom, mischief, purchase, arctic, and harmless. So those are your words for this week. They all have that vowel, consonant, 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 vowel pattern in them. You want to pause the video now, write these down, spell them correctly so that you can make a 100 on your spelling test. And we'll be doing two practices as always this week. Okay, today, I'm only going to have one thing for you to do. We are going to continue our super sentence activities, but this week, we're going to take those super sentences that we write, we're going to begin turning them into paragraphs. The very first TCAP test you're going to take, whether, no matter what students you are, or what school you're at, rather, um, is going to be the writing test. So, Russellville students are going to be in my room on May the 4th, and they're going to have a writing prompt and they're going to have to write a whole paper and so we need to get, get ready for that we've been writing this year but i really want us to focus as we focused last week on super sentences now we've got to put those super sentences together to make a paragraph and in our writing prompt we'll put some paragraphs together to make an essay so that's our that's our goal this week we went from sentences this week we're moving to paragraphs next week you'll have an essay that will work on together so this week, the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to take two main ideas and you're going to write three supporting super sentences for the main idea. I don't want little baby sentences. I want you to write good super sentences. You did a great job at that last week. Your sentences were awesome every day. You created uh, pictures with your writing one day. You wrote about you yourself one day. Then you just took some little baby sentences and added details. Make sure these sentences are full of details. And so we know a paragraph has a main idea. And inside that paragraph, there's some sentences that support the main idea. And those supporting sentences are what you are writing. So the main idea of, um, the, imagine this was a paragraph. It will be tomorrow. The main idea is breakfast is an important meal. So we've got to come up with three supporting sentences that support that idea that breakfast is important. Okay, so you're going to need to click down here beside these and you'll need to add some super sentences. So what makes breakfast an important meal? Okay, um, so we might want to say something like um, eating a healthy breakfast gives you the energy 
you need to start your day. You might say something like, um, pro the protein from some fresh eggs and a nice cup of juice helps get you going in the mornings. And then you have to add one more. Sometimes it's hard to think of what you want to write. Um, who wants to sit at school and feel hungry because they didn't have breakfast? Okay, so there's my three supporting sentences. Breakfast is important because it gives you energy you need to start your day. Um, it gets you going in the mornings and you don't want to sit at school and feel hungry. So, and then you'll, then you'll do the same thing for this uh, so main idea. Computers are important tools for learning. You'll give me three supporting sentences that support the idea that computers are important tools for learning. Okay. So that's your assignment for today. Only one thing for ELA, this assignment for ELA, and that's all. So once you get that done, um, you're going to turn it in. Um, but we're going to take these and then tomorrow we're going to turn them into paragraphs. Okay. So you'll see what I mean. So I'll, I want you to take this and do it and do turn it in today. Um, but I'm going to send it back to you tomorrow and then you're going to take your uh, supporting sentences and you're going to turn, you're going to pick one of these and turn them into a paragraph. So that's where this assignment is heading. Okay. So make sure you get this done today or you'll have to do this and a paragraph tomorrow. All right. I'll let you get started. Have a great day.